Hey there, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about using unit rates in equations. So that's our I can statement. I can use unit rates in equations. And just a quick overview of what we will be doing in this video. We're going to cover this page of notes and then we're going to go to your assignment page and we'll be doing numbers 1 and 13 from your assignment. Okay, let's get started with our warm up. Find the unit rate for each situation. Okay, you run six miles in two hours. And they go ahead and tell you, just for clarity, how they want you to set it up. They want it in miles per hour. So you're definitely gonna be putting the miles on top and the hours on bottom. So let's fill in our little blanks here. How many miles was it? Oh, it looks like it was six miles. And then how many hours? It was two hours. Okay, so here's our ratio. Can this be simplified or reduced? Yeah, both of those numbers are divisible by two. So when you divide them by two, you're gonna get three miles in one hour. And now you can take this and you could also write it as three miles per hour. Both of these would be correct. All right, let's try B. And if you wanna try it on your own, go ahead and pause the video and then check back in with me in a second. That would be great. It says four presents for every two children. And then they clarify just to say, we're finding the number of presents per child. So that means you're gonna put presents on top and children on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and write that presents on the top and I'm leaving myself room for a number. And then number of children on the bottom. Okay, and what's the information they give us? It says four presents, so we're gonna put our four there and two children, so let's put our two there. And now we just look at it and say, can this be simplified? Yes, it can. Both of these numbers are also divisible by two. So let's go ahead and say four, no. <laughs> four divided by two is gonna give us two presents per one child. Okay, let me look real quick. Did I do that right? Yes, I did that right. Okay, so two presents per one child or two presents, I do not have enough room, but you would say presents per child. That says two presents per child, just in case you can't read that. Okay, so those were our warm-ups. Did you get them right? Good job if you did. Let's go on. It says one reason unit rates are valuable is they, let's add a Y there, make things easy to compare. And comparing things can be very important. The other reason is that once we have a unit rate, we can easily scale the rate up or down. Now what are they talking about? Well, like if you know how many grams of sugar there is in one cookie, but you might want to find out how many grams of sugar there are in 500 cookies, that would be scaling it up. It's basically using equivalent fractions or ratios to make things bigger or smaller. Scaling can be, be made easier by using an equation. So that's where the equations come into play. Okay, let's see how this works. Let's look at example one. You run six miles in two hours. Okay, so that's familiar. That's what we just did right here, right? And we figured out our unit rate is three, or three over one, either way. For part A, complete the table of values beginning with zero. Okay, let's do that. So zero hours, well in zero hours, how far will is this person have run? Uh, or the person is you, oh, hmm, okay. <laughs> in zero hours, I will have run zero miles. There you go. How far will I run in one hour? Well, it looks like we run three miles per one hour, so I'm gonna put a three here. All right, what if we had two hours? Well, that's in the original problem, six miles in two hours. So I'm gonna put a six here. Okay, what if we had three hours? How many miles would I run then? Well, it looks like it's uh, multiplying by three each time, right? So one times three is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine. So in three hours, I will have run nine miles. And what about in four, mile, four hours? Four times three is gonna be 12. So if I ran for four hours, I will have run 12 miles. Sounds like a long time to run to me, but this is just a math problem, right? I know some of you could run for four hours. Doesn't mean I could. Let's go ahead and graph this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and plot the points. That's all it says for part B, starting with zero, zero. Zero, zero. Now I've kind of forgotten here that I need to be marking my axes. So when you have a table like this, on the left hand side, like where it says hours, these are always gonna be our x values. And on the right hand side where it says miles, those will always be our y's. 
So let me go ahead and write this onto the graph as well. So x is hours, so I'm going to write hours right here. And y is miles, so I will write miles right here for the y-axis. Okay, so we already have 0, 0. Now let's do 1, 3. So if I ran for 1 hour, I will have gone 3 miles right there. What about 2, 6? Okay, so if I run for 2 hours, then I will have gone 6 miles. Here's 3, 9. So 3 hours would be 9 miles. And 4 hours would be 12 miles. And once you get that done, did I get that? No, I missed it. Sorry. Just ignore that one. Once you get that done, you can connect with your line. And it's just going to kind of go up like that. Okay, so that is part B. For part C, it says use the unit rate to create an equation that will represent what happens in the table. Alright, so what variables should we use in the equation? Well, a lot of times we're flexible with variables, like we might say m for miles or h for hours. But in this case, because we're using our x and y chart and we have x and y on our graph and all those things, I want to stick to x and y. So basically, we're going to use y for miles and x for hours. All right. Now, when you set these equations up, you always want to start with the same thing. You always want to start with y equals. Okay. So just remember that. Repeat after me. Always start the equation with y equals. Now, why do we start with y? Why, why, why? Because y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. You don't have to worry about that too much. Another way of saying that is usually the thing that we put on the y-axis is the thing that we're trying to compute. Like we're not trying to find out the number of hours we ran here. What we're trying to find out is the number of miles we went in that amount of time. So if that makes sense, great. If not, just always start with y equals. Okay, so now I'm going to leave myself a little space here and we're going to write something in there in a second. y equals blank x. All right, so x equals the hours, y equals the miles. Let's go back over here to our table so we can kind of figure out what's going to go in this blank. Okay, so what am I going to do to these numbers on the left in order to get the numbers on the right? Well, 0 times anything equals 0, right? But what do I multiply or divide 1 by to get to a 3? We multiply by 3, right? And what about to go from 2 to 6 or 3 to 9? Still, times 3. Does that work for 4 to 12? 4 times 3 equals 12, yes. So basically the rule we're using here is we're multiplying all the x's by 3 and that gives us the y. So that is what we're going to write over here, 3. Okay, now let's just kind of plug some numbers in to double check, make sure this is making sense. So what if we use, let's use this one right here. Okay, so y equals 3 times x. So our x value there is the 2. Okay, so I'm going to plug 2 in right here. So I'm just going to say y equals 3 times 2. And what it gives us should be this y value right here, if we did it right. So let's do the math and see if we got 6. Let's see. 3 times 2 equals 6. y equals 6. Okay, yes, it's working out. It looks like we set up our equation the right way. So you don't need all of this. I'm just going to gently x that out. This right here is the equation that you do need. Okay. Uh, let's go over to example 2. Okay, it says there are four presents for every two children. So this was our other warm-up, right? Right up here. In part A, complete, complete the table of values. Okay, so let's do that first. So for we have to figure out which one is x and which one is y here. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that x should always be the number from the bottom. Okay, so x is the number from the bottom. You would have the y number on top and the x number on bottom. And when I'm talking about the top and bottom, I'm talking about your original ratio or your unit rate, either one, because as you know, they're equivalent, right? So it looks like the units that we have on the bottom here are the children. So we're going to put children where the x's go. Children. And I'm just going to write x right there. Now for y, it's going to be the number of presents. That's the top number. Okay, so this is the bottom number. 
and this one is the top number from whatever ratio you have set up. Okay, now again we should start with zero. So if there are zero children, how many presents do we need? Zero, right? What if there's one child? How many presents will we need? Well, looking at it again, there's two presents per one child, so it looks like we're gonna need two presents if there's one child. What if there's two children? That's kind of there from the original problem, right? If there are two children, there are four presents. So when there's two children, there are four presents. Just like that. What if there's three children? Well, now maybe it's helpful to look and see what's happening with these numbers. How do we go from one to a two? And, and how, we do, how do we go from two to a four? We multiply them by two, right? So whatever we're doing to the three, we need to multiply it by two. So three times two is gonna be six. What if there are four children? Four times two is gonna be eight. Okay, so that's how we fill in the chart, the table. Now, well, you see how there's like blank space here and then a graph over here? What that means is they want us to go ahead and write our equation first, so let's do that. So remember, our equation always starts with what? Y equals, yes, go ahead and write that down. Y equals, leave yourself a blank space and then write an X, okay? All right, so what are we multiplying the x's by to get the y's? In this case, all of these x's, we were talking about that a second ago, right? They're all being multiplied by two to get the y. So that means a two is gonna go right there. Now, if we wanna plug one in, something in, just to make sure, well, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, first of all, let's talk about what our variables represent. X is children and y is presence. Okay, so let's plug something in for children. If we had four children, that would be two times four equals eight presents. Does that sound right? Four children, eight presents. Yeah, it checked out, so I think we did it right. Let's go ahead and circle that. All right, now we just have to plot it on this table. No, this graph here. This is a table, and this is a graph, and sometimes I get my words mixed up. Table, graph. We can do this, I can do this. Okay, so on the X we have children, and on the Y we have presence. Okay, so the first one's zero, zero, yeah, right there. Now if we have one child, we need two presents. So one child, two presents, two children, four presents, three children, six presents, and four children, eight presents, and it would go on in that fashion, it would continue, so we're just gonna keep connecting with our line, try to make it as straight as you can, and there's your graph. Okay, let's go on to example three. It says use the unit rate to write an equation that would represent each situation using X and Y and then state what X and Y represent. Okay, so we're gonna be writing an equation and we're gonna be making sure we define what X and Y represent. Okay, so four gallons of gas cost $8.56. Note, usually dollars go on top. Yes, dollars on top, that is good advice. So let's write our ratio, and then we'll figure out our unit rate. So 856, and then four goes on the bottom for those four, four gallons of gas. Okay, let's figure out our unit rate by doing $8.56 $8 divided by four. So 8.56 divided by four, that gives us $2.14 per one gallon. And I forgot to write my units here, so there we go. So we have our dollars on top and our gallons on the bottom. Okay, so now let's write our equation. Now remember what the equations are gonna start with and what they're gonna look like. They're gonna start with y, and then they're gonna equal something times x. So I'm leaving myself a little space there. Now we just have to figure out what's put in there. So, um, first of all, what do the X and the Y represent? So remember, the X is the number from the bottom, and the Y is the number from the top. Or you could say the units from the bottom and the units from the top. So the X is the units from the bottom, so the X is gonna be gallons, and the Y is gonna be, what was that, dollars. There we go. Okay, so let's see here. What do we need to write right here? What times X will give us the number of dollars total? Well, remember that X represents the number of gallons, 
So if you were to write in here the number of dollars that one gallon costs, then this equation would work out, right? It'd be the number of dollars per gallon times the number of gallons equals the total cost. Does that sound good? I think that sounds good. So we're gonna write 2.14. Okay, and at this point, I kinda of wanna take a second and point something out. This 2.14, we kind of thought through it, but in reality, it just matches that perfectly, doesn't it? What about over here? The two in front of the X? Well, let's see if we can figure out what the unit rate was for this problem. It's all the way up here at the top. What was the unit rate? It was this, two over one. So this also matches the unit rate. What about over here? Y equals three X? Does the three match the unit rate for this problem? Um, yes, it looks like it does. We had three for that unit rate also. So a good way to think about this is, it's kind of like a formula, y is gonna equal, and as I'm kind of saying what they're saying here, you can just scribble that out, y will equal the unit rate times x. So this is the secret to writing these formulas. y equals the unit rate times x, okay? Let's go ahead and do B, and we'll see if we can use this to help us out. It says you, ha you hike five miles in eight hours. So let's put five miles on top, and we'll put eight hours on the bottom. Do we need to simplify that? No, it's fully simplified already, so I think we're good. Oh wait, what am I talking about? Sorry, I just blipped for a second. We do need to figure out our unit rate, sorry. So five divided by eight is gonna equal 0 0.625. And that is gonna be, in terms of units, that'll be miles per hour. So I'm just gonna write MPH. Okay, now another way to write this is 5 eighths miles per hour. You'll notice that's just the same as the original fraction. Just two different ways to write it. Both would be correct, okay? Let's go ahead and write our equation. So using this little cheat sheet here, you know it starts with Y equals. And now what's our unit rate? Let's write 0 0.625 or you can write it with the 5 eighths, that's perfectly fine. And then we just need our x, and then we're done. So how would we use this? Well, maybe we wanna figure out if we were to hike 10 hours, how far would it be? And then we would plug the 10 in for the x, multiply it through by the 0 0.625, and that would tell us the total number of miles that we went. That's how you would use something like that. Before I let you go, let's go ahead and look at numbers 1 and 13 from the next page. Okay, now I'm gonna write my little equation again here. Y equals unit rate times X. So let's look at the instructions. Match an equation to a context. Hint, find the unit rate and remember where the cost usually goes. Cost goes on top, okay. So you have all of these unit rates and you might use those for your equations. So let's look at number one. Spencer can ride a bike seven miles per hour. So we wanna do miles per hour, so let's do seven miles on top. And how long does it take him to go the seven miles? One hour, so it looks like that is already our unit rate. So seven over one is the same thing as seven. I'm just gonna write miles per hour like that. Okay, so that's our unit rate. Now what will our equation be? Well, starts with y equals, and then we're gonna write the unit rate, which was seven, and then we just write an x, and we're done with that box. Now we just need to explain the variables. So if you remember, the y variable is the one from the top of the ratio, in other words, miles, and the x variable is the one on the bottom of the ratio, in other words, hours, okay? So x equals hours, and y equals miles. So just remember, y is top, x is bottom. Okay, that's all you have to do for explaining the variables. Let's take a look at 13. 13 is very similar. Sally makes $12 every two hours. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how much she makes per one hour for the unit rate, right? So we're gonna put $12 on top and two hours on the bottom. Now we want that bottom number to become a one, so we're gonna just divide everything by two, and it's gonna be $6 per one hour. 
This is our unit rate, six. Now let's write our equation. Our equation is y equals, then write the unit rate, then write your x. There's your equation. Boom, you got it. Now explanation of variables. What is x equal, what is y equal? Well, x was the number on the bottom, so x is gonna be the hours. And what is y equal? That was the number on the top, so that one is gonna be the dollars. Okay, and now you are done with that. Now there's another part to 13 right down here. It says make a table for problems 13 and 14 above. So you're gonna use 13 to make your table and do the graphing. So if you already know how to do that, awesome, you can stop here. If you wanna hang on for another couple minutes, let me walk you through it, that works too. So for X, again, X is the number on the bottom. So this is gonna be hours. And then the Y on the top, that's gonna to be dollars. Okay, so you're starting at zero, zero, because in zero hours, Sally's gonna make zero dollars, right? What about in one hour, two hours, three hours, or four hours? Let's see. In one hour, it looks like she made six dollars. In two hours, it looks like she made twelve dollars. And let's just keep following the pattern. It looks like each time, we're multiplying by six, right? And by the way, what was the unit rate? Same thing, it's the six, yeah? Okay, so three times six is gonna be 18. Four times six is gonna be 24. All right, there's our table. You have to do your labels, you have to do your numbers, the, arrow, the arrows are optional. Now let's do our graph. And first step in a graph, label the axes. So our X axis is hours, and our Y axis is dollars. We know there's a zero, zero. Okay, let's go. One hour, six dollars. One hour, six dollars. Two hours, twelve dollars. Okay, there it is. Three hours, eighteen dollars. Here's three going up to eighteen, because eighteen's right there, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And four hours, here's four, twenty-four dollars. Going up, there's twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. And then if you were to go further, it would go off the graph. You never have to go off the graph. Just draw your arrow kind of continuing in that direction and you're done. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.